Hello, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, unwanted pets and relatives. It's Mr. Plumbo here, and today we are going to talk about industrialization or the second industrial revolution. Now, the first industrial revolution started mostly in Great Britain, early 1800s. What we are going to be discussing today is the second industrial revolution. Uh, that happened after the Civil War, and it's mostly known for its advance in technology. After the Civil War, America experiences very rapid change. It begins to transform from an agricultural, uh, rural society to a predominantly urban manufacturing and technological society. The railroad is getting people across the country faster. Uh, electricity is lighting the streets and lighting homes. Industrialization isn't all sunshine and rainbows. There are some negative aspects to it, though I would argue that industrialization has allowed uh, the majority of a society to have an increased standard of living. There's also negative impacts such as pollution. Uh, there's also, in this time frame, an, a completely unregulated economy, an unfettered capitalism, if you will, which allowed a few people to become extremely wealthy while exploiting the labor force. And this is going to bring ideas of unionization and organized labor, which is in this unit. Uh, and this also brings ideas of socialism and capitalism, mostly in Europe, but those ideas are going to come into the progressive era here in America right after this time. So today all we are going to discuss is what is industrialization and what are the key components needed to successfully industrialize. Let's get right. started. To it here, industrialization. Now we are talking roughly the time frame between 1865, right after the Civil War, to approximately 1901. Uh, the years could give or take a few. Uh, let's dig right into the word. Well, we know that the word industrial is in the word industrialization, so that means industry. And the suffix ization means the process of becoming. So, what does industrialization mean? It means the process of becoming industrial. And so, we're looking at how the U.S was evolving from predominantly an agricultural-based country to an industrial one. So what do you need for a nation to industrialize? What does a nation need to be successful in this? Well, there's roughly five components in no particular order. First, you're going to need a labor force. You're going to need people to build things. You're going to need people to uh, ship things and carry things and sell things. You're going to need a labor force, whether you work in manufacturing or services. You're going to need people to get the job done. You're going to need natural resources. If you're building something, if you're making a good, you're going to need natural resources, whether it's in making the good itself or getting the good to market, that's going to take natural resources as well. You're going to need capital. Now, for the, for the sake of this unit, capital is a generalized term simply meaning money. However, I will give you a more economic term here in a minute. Uh, you're going to need entrepreneurs and you're going to need inventions. Now, I, I combine these two together. You can probably uh, put them separate, but they kind of work in tandem. And you're going to need a free economy. So let's look at these uh, individually in more detail. Let's start with the labor force. Between 1860 and 1910, the population of the United States tripled. Now this had to do predominantly with two things. Uh, we were still having large families back then and we had another wave of immigration uh, from Asia and from Southern and Central Europe mostly. 
Uh, many immigrants were fleeing Europe, for example, for more economic opportunity to escape oppressive governments and to gain greater religious freedom. I often tell my students that this wave of immigration was a lot like the uh, colonial period, the, the Europeans coming over during that time uh, were also coming over for economic and religious reasons. All right, natural resources. The United States has and had vast amounts of natural resources. Things like timber, steel, coal, copper, and petroleum. All these things are very important for industrialization. Capital. Now I said earlier that in this unit for this subject they're, they're meaning money. The generic meaning for capital is money. Uh, you'll learn how the railroad tycoons sought investment from private and government uh, sources. They wanted the government to provide the capital, i.e. the money. However, there's a more economic term for capital. Capital are things used to make other goods and services. So if you are a delivery business like UPS, some of the capital you use in your business is the big delivery trucks. That would be considered capital. Uh, the boxes that you put other people's stuff in would be considered capital. Uh, so capital are the things you need in your business to get the job done, to get whatever you do, to provide whatever you provide, to make it possible. So again, things like, in this case, during this time, it would be machines, tools, trains, and even buildings can be considered capital. All right, entrepreneurs and inventions. So let's talk about inventions first. Inventions are pretty much anything that improves all aspect of living or standard of living. And we had a lot of them going on. I talked about electricity. Um, electricity, though it's not an invention, it's more of a discovery, but you learning how to harness electricity improved the lives of countless individuals. Um, things like factories were able to increase the number of goods produced. If I can produce more of them, I can lower the cost. If I can lower the cost, more people can buy them and benefit from them. And entrepreneurs are individuals who can combine all these other factors we're talking about and make a successful product or service that society wants or needs. Uh, and another important aspect to the entrepreneur that you have to know, at least in an economic sense, is the entrepreneur is the one who assumes the risk. Not every enterprise is successful. All right, and then we have the free economy. A free economy, well, a completely free economy, is one where no government, there's no government involvement in the economy. There's, there's, they don't regulate, they don't set the rules. Um, buyers and sellers are completely free to act in any way they feel best. So again, no rules and regulations. How, how, is, how is price determined? Well, supply and demand, the market signals of supply and demand determine prices. So basically, it's the survival of the fittest, economically speaking. And when I say there's no rules and regulations, I'm not saying that lightly. I mean, there was no worker protections. There was no consumer protections. Um, it was really a completely free economy. So again, uh, let's talk about some other things you're going to need to know regarding industrialization. This isn't everything, but this 
these are the important pieces. The railroads. There's no industrialization without the railroads. Railroads lessened the time of travel. Railroads were able to connect different parts of the country. Often isolated parts of the country now had access to bigger markets and more goods and services. And the development of the transcontinental railroad and the, the development of more railroad lines spurred demand for things like timber, steel, and coal. All those things have to be harvested, which provides lots of jobs. Next, we have the robber barons. Um, these guys were the titans of industry at the time. They amassed great wealth. Uh, wealth today, in today's numbers, that is just astounding. For example, uh, John D. Rockefeller, his wealth in today's dollars is about $318 billion. Now, just to give you a little comparison, Bill Gates, who is the richest man in the world today, has about $40 billion. Andrew Carnegie had a little under $300 billion, $298 billion. Uh, so this is a great, these guys, these guys were rich. Uh, one of the criticisms is they operated monopolies. Monopolies are enterprises that control the economy because they're the only ones providing the good and service. Uh, when a company is the only one providing a good and service, it can charge whatever it wants and most of the time the quality isn't as good. Some had questionable business tactics. Um, they bribed government officials to get favor uh, from them, and they are known as people that might have exploited their workers by paying them very little. However, many were philanthropists. Uh, for example, Rockefeller uh, tithed 10% of his income his entire life and towards the end of his life gave up about half of his fortune to charity. Andrew Carnegie also gave up about 90% of his wealth uh, once he died to charity. So these guys amassed great wealth, but they also were men who shared some of their wealth. All right, let's talk about labor unions. Now, one thing I've said already is industrialization is good. Industrialization raised the average worker's income by 50% from 1865 to 1900. So industrialization does raise the standard of living. However, work was dangerous and unregulated. There were no eight-hour work days, 40-hour uh, work weeks, weekends off. There was no workman's compensation. There was no social security disability. Basically, if you worked in the factory and you got your arm chopped off, you were out of a job with no medical benefits, and the next guy took your place. Now, because of this, Workers began to organize and form labor unions, and they would start petitioning their employers uh, for better working conditions and wages. Their protests were known as strikes. All right, this is uh, something that I do in my class when we do journal prompts, and so if you're a homeschool student or parent, here are some things you can do with your child um, to think about industrialization and put it into some more context. 
you can complete the following activities. First, make a T-chart and give three advantages and disadvantages to industrialization. What are the pros and cons? And do the pros outweigh the cons? Very good activity. Another activity is which of the following five components that was listed are as needed for industrialization, which is the most important? And explain your reasons. Very good activity there. And finally, think of the state where you live and identify which of the components of industrialization it has plenty of. And which one does it lack, if any? Um, and then what you can do is you can come up with a business plan on how to help your state economy prosper using the elements of industrialization. <laughs>